Apple's made some controversial decisions in the last few years, such as the removal of the headphone jack, or the charger and headphones from the box. This has sparked outrage from some customers and even resulted in competing companies producing ads mocking their decisions. But like most things Apple does, other companies followed suit within a few months. But why? This is something I wanted to find out. Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to try and find out why companies might really be removing the things customers are wanting. It doesn't really matter who you buy a flagship phone from in 2022, as they are mostly coming with the same amount of features and bundled accessories. I really feel like the prices of phones have been increasing, but we're getting less and less with each new model. The first iPhone came bundled with a charger, USB cable, headphones, dock, cleaning cloth, and regular documentation, in comparison to just the cable and documentation with the last few iPhone models. While Apple wasn't the first manufacturer to ship a phone without a headphone jack or charger, they are the ones to make it mainstream. With the introduction of the iPhone 7, the headphone jack was removed out of courage, and that its removal betters us all. Quite a positive statement for removing a feature used by millions. While they had just created a problem for wired headphone users, the answer was just around the corner, with the launch of AirPods, a $230 solution to the iPhone 7's lack of a headphone jack. Today, these AirPods range from $279 to $900. The AirPods Max costing more than Apple's cheapest iPhone. Some people will argue this was done to increase the iPhone 7's water resistance, create space for a larger battery, or prepare for an edge-to-edge -edge display in the iPhone 10. All hard to justify claims. Competitors like Samsung had water-resistant phones equipped with the jack receive a higher IP rating, which means they were more sealed against dust. They'd even made a Galaxy S5, a water-resistant phone which had a removable back panel. As for the battery claims, while it did have a larger capacity, it didn't take up more space than the one in the iPhone 6 or 6S. While researching this topic, I even came across a video which claimed this move allowed Apple to make the edge-to-edge -edge display. As the chin on Android competitors was apparently caused by the display's controller, and folding that controller behind the display was only possible after removing the headphone jack. Now I know not everyone's opened up a phone or knows exactly how they work, but folding that cable behind the display is very common practice. The likely reason for the chin was a lack in display technology used on that phone, or the navigation buttons, which the iPhone also had at one point. If it really was an issue, then couldn't they have just placed the port at the top if they really wanted to keep it? Now to Apple's credit, they did ship wired lightning headphones and a headphone jack dongle with the phone. However, it wasn't without the downside of not being able to charge while listening to music or now having to carry around a dongle to use other headphones. Apple's proprietary lightning connector also allows Apple to charge third parties a fee to develop accessories for it. Third parties would have to now pay Apple a special fee to develop lightning headphones, which could increase the cost to consumers. I strongly believe they removed the audio jack to entice people to purchase a pair of wireless headphones. Apple's own offering paired effortlessly and had the status that came with the brand. They were a financial success, making Apple millions of dollars. It seemed people were happy to fork out extra on top of the newest phone for some extra headphones. It wasn't long before other companies did the same, after seeing all of the success Apple was having. Before long, we had the Pixel Buds, Galaxy Buds, and every other bud imaginable. Of course, the headphone jack vanished for most high-end phones. Samsung even removed their previous ads mocking Apple for not having the headphone jack after the release of its Galaxy Note 10. Google stated it removed it to enable the display to go closer and closer to the edge, a statement hard to understand when looking at the A series of phones, which has both an edge-to-edge -edge display and headphone jack, while their flagship line doesn't. You have to remember these companies designed these phones from the ground up, so if you're looking inside the phone, you might not see any space where they could add the port. But really, if they wanted to, they could find space. After all, Samsung manages to fit a pen inside its phones. And don't try and tell me you couldn't fit a headphone jack into an iPad. In fact, a lot of low and mid-range phones still have the jack. I speculate this is because the marketing team understands if the customer didn't splurge for the highest end phone, they likely won't or don't have the money to spend on wireless headphones. 
While they understand the need for technology to evolve, most Bluetooth headphones have a major issue. They are disposable, and they run off batteries which degrade in performance and eventually need replacement. It doesn't matter if it's a phone, headphones, or a car. They all need to be replaced at some point. And that wouldn't be an issue if you could easily buy and replace the battery, but that's just not the case, as I showed with a pair of AirPods in a previous video. They were destroyed in the process, just to be able to remove the battery. And that is single-handedly the worst thing about wireless headphones. Not only do you need to fork out the cost of them, but expect to have to replace them every few years. Not to mention the environmental impact that comes from millions of unfixable wireless headphones. But making them not last means customers will have to keep coming back to purchase new ones. And that adds up fast. If you buy a new pair every two years, you could be spending thousands over a 10 year period. As much as I despise the removal of the 3.5mm headphone jack, in recent years we've seen companies remove the power adapter and wired headphones from the box. Most claim this is done to minimise the impact to the environment, whether from the added material to produce the charger and headphones, to just maximising how many phones they can ship between their warehouses. But there's really two sides to this. It's true that with a smaller box you can ship larger quantities between factories and distribution centres. But the shipping benefits don't apply to the end customer. In fact, if you go out and buy a set of headphones and a charger, the impact will actually be greater from its packaging and shipping. So the impact to the environment is really just being pushed onto somebody else. Now Apple and Samsung lowered the price of their phones to accommodate this, but shipping a cable that terminates with a USB-C connector means it likely won't even fit your old chargers. And with technological improvements, phones support faster charging than they did a few years ago, something your old brick won't be compatible with. So even if you use your old charger, it will likely result in slow charging. There's also been a really big push towards wireless charging, which is much less efficient when compared to a cable. This results in more energy being required to fully charge your phone, another thing that really isn't benefiting the environment. With my S22s from Samsung, they included a free wireless charger, but shipped it in an entirely separate parcel from the phones. While I'm grateful that they gave me a free product, it didn't seem very environmentally friendly. All of these tech companies want to make more money, so they're incentivized to sell you more, because that's in their best interest. I'm not trying to say you shouldn't buy one of these new tech gadgets, but you should be aware that not everything they do is to benefit you or the environment. All of these companies have made some really good products, but some might come with compromises. Whether that's a lack of ports or accessories that you want, or maybe just the inability to repair your own device. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the Repair Tips playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.